Hello everyone, welcome to another vlog from the ship about the seaman life. Today I will tell you about the seasickness. This is something that nobody is spared if you are either a rating or a deck or engine officer or even the captain of the vessel. We all experience seasickness. It's just a matter of how you experience it. And today I will tell you how to manage it and how to deal with this if you decide to become a seaman. First things first, seasickness is actually motion sickness. You can have this either on a ship, on an airplane, or even in the car. There is no difference between this. Some people only have it on board and they do not have it in the airplane. So it's a case-to-case -case basis. And this is happening because the receptors from your inner ear are not synchronizing with the receptors from your eyes. One of them is telling the brain that you are standing still. The other one is telling the brain, no, no, he is moving, my friend, pay attention. <laughs> so that is why we are feeling motion sickness. Not everybody is experiencing motion sickness the same way. Some people have headaches or they feel dizziness. Some people throw up and some people who are luckier from my point of view only experience motion sickness by feeling hungry at this particular time. And of course, you will find something to eat when you are on board the vessel. Even sardines is enough for you. It doesn't have to be caviar or something expensive. <laughs> if you are planning to come at sea, to become a seafarer, a seaman, you have to take this into consideration that you may have seasickness, motion sickness, and you don't even know about it. And things are getting worse every year. As you can see by yourself, watching the news, the weather is becoming worse every year. There are more and more storms across the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. So you can expect for sure to have some storms while you are at sea. If you have motion sickness, you will discover by yourself and that is what you sign up when you are signing that contract to come at sea to become a seaman this is one of the factors that you have to take in consideration for that high salary because seafarers have a high salary everybody knows that and this is one of the risks that you are taking to have motion sickness and better have some pills with you in your luggage do not depend on the hospital on board the vessel they may not have what you need if i were to tell you my personal story i did not know i have seasickness i have been sailing for the last 13 years but i only started sailing on small ships seven years ago before that i was sailing only on 100,000 to 150,000 dead weight ships on that type of ship being so big you do not feel any small wave that is hitting the ship even if it's not loaded only in ballast mode so I did not know I have motion sickness sea sickness but seven years ago I started sailing on smaller vessels 30,000 35,000 dead weight and it might sound like a big ship but when you are in ballast condition, you feel everything. The stability is there. It will not go upside down, but you feel everything. And you feel it more the higher you go on the vessel. So you can imagine if you are going up to C deck or D deck, if it's such a big vessel, then you will feel any small wave, especially when you are in ballast mode. So you might not know that you have motion sickness until you work on a smaller vessel. That is something to consider. Depending on 
how big is the storm that you are going through with your vessel, the ship can experience different movement. You can have either rolling, which is a tilting rotation of the vessel along its longitudinal axis, an offset or deviation from the normal axis. It's a front to back movement, so to say. Another way the ship can move is pitching, which is up and down rotation of the vessel about its transverse axis, which is side to side, so to speak. And another way your vessel can move, depending on the storm that you are going through, can be a yawn, which is a turning rotation of the vessel about its vertical axis. It's an offset or a deviation from the normal axis and is referred as a deviation or a set. How the cargo ships are dealing with the storms nowadays, you may ask? Well, as you can imagine, no crew on a cargo ship wants to find itself in the middle of a storm. Trying to minimize every hour of delay is crucial and most cargo ships have implemented safety routines and are equipped with computer-based systems for weather routing to avoid extreme weather conditions because of safety of the vessel, because commercial pressure and so on. Nowadays, all the ships in the commercial fleet of the world have autopilot. So the ship is running by itself, mostly. But an experienced captain will not allow the vessel to go fully through a big storm. It only depends on the experience of the captain. So he has to ask permission from the charterer because if he wants to take the ship away from the normal route, which was sent before departure from the port, that uh, implies an additional cost for fuel. So after asking permission from the charterer, he can deviate the ship from the normal route just a little bit, a few degrees, and that way the ship can be safer. Of course, any charterer will accept this because uh, the cargo is more important. So, an experienced captain will always be sure that the ship is out of danger. That does not mean that the ship will not roll at all, but at least you are not going through the eye of the storm, so to say. <laughs> you will be safe anyway. Like I was saying at the beginning of the vlog, I have been at sea for the last 13 years but I still have seasickness and whenever I go on board I take seasickness pills. I am not ashamed to admit this. My purpose for going on board is to make money. So if that implies me taking some medication, I am fine with that. I signed that contract for the big paycheck and I am not ashamed to admit that I have seasickness. It is not something that depends on me. It's just the way my mother made me. <laughs> but if I were to give you an advice, I would say that better to go and visit your doctor and take his opinion. What seasickness pills you should take. I do not have medical studies, so I cannot give my opinion what medicine you should take. Usually they have seasickness pills on board the vessel. But most of the time, the prescription is in Chinese and you do not always have a Chinese crew member. And most of the guys do not know Chinese. So the medicine that they are giving you for seasickness may interact with something that you are already taking. Maybe you have some sickness or maybe you have already some pills that you are taking for another disease and this can interact with your normal medicine. So, in my opinion, better take the opinion of your doctor what seasickness pills you should have with you. But you should always have medicine in your luggage, brought from home, from your own country. Do not rely on what they will have on board. Maybe you are unlucky and they just finished the seasickness medicine, so nobody can help you. I know how it is to be first time on board. You have a lot on your mind, a lot of worries and 
medicine will be at the bottom of the list of your worries, so to speak. So maybe you will just forget to take any medicine in your luggage. In that case, I will give you some practical advice just so you can pass the storm and get over the seasickness. These advices I have taken from older seamen during my sea time for the past 13 years. I emphasize the necessity of medicine, first of all, but in case they do not have it on board and you forgot to take anything in your luggage, I will give you this advice that older sea wolves have told me over the years. If you are unlucky enough to be in a big storm on your first time at sea, first of all, I recommend to go to the kitchen, to the galley, and ask the chief cook for a piece of lemon and you suck on the lemon because when you will be first time on the vessel and you will be on a big storm with 10 meter 12 meter waves hitting the ship besides the seasickness you will also have panic and sucking on a lemon will make you go over that panic and try to calm down your body and your mind first of all if it's only seasickness and there is no panic involved, then I recommend some salty treats, some salty biscuits. You will find something like that in the galley. Of course, speak with the chief cook or the messman. They will assist you in finding something like that. Another trick that I have been using over the years is to sleep on the floor in the cabin. So you just take the mattress from the bed or you take a thick blanket and you put it on the floor and you sleep on the floor but you sleep on the opposite side of the movement of the vessel like you are seeing now for example you are seeing now that the ship is rolling this is rolling so you will sleep opposite to this direction and this way if you are sleeping on the floor and you are sitting on the opposite direction of the movement of the vessel your head will have less movement and this way you will feel less seasickness in no time. It will be like a miracle. You will feel sick again when you have to get up. But as long as you are sitting on the floor, on the opposite direction of the vessel, if it's either rolling like in this image right now or if it's pitching, you just put your body on the opposite direction. On some vessels, inside each cabin there is also besides the bed there is a um, couch and the couch is usually on the opposite direction of the bed but that is not always the case sometimes the couch and the bed are facing the bow of the vessel so if you are lucky enough to have them in opposite direction then you do not have to sleep on the floor either way you will find a way to feel less seasickness. Another thing that you can do when you are feeling seasick is to go in one of the empty cabins on the lower decks. Usually on the upper deck there are two or three cabins which are always empty. They are kept empty for either a vetting inspector who has to stay on board for a few hours or a loading master or an inspector on any kind. And these cabins usually are empty, like I was saying. And as long as you are keeping them nice and clean, neither the captain or the chief officer will have an issue if you are going there to sleep for a few hours or a few nights. They will not have a problem with you as long as you are cleaning afterwards. But my advice to you is to have medicine regarding this seasickness. Just keep it in your luggage before you departure. Just make a list with things that you have to take in your luggage when you come on board for the first time and this should be a priority. Seasickness pills. They are most of the time only from plants. There are no chemicals so there is nothing to interact with the chemicals in your body. 
there are no side effects from my knowledge. But better to take advice from your doctor and he will tell you exactly which type of sea sickness medicine is suited for you. And that is all that I have to say about the sea sickness. I hope it was useful for you. I hope you have enjoyed it. As you can see, I'm rolling here like, <laughs> like I'm in a circus. I'm doing my best to keep steady. I'm trying to show you how we are rolling. This was a very bad voyage. Like I was saying before, we were rolling for three weeks non-stop. And this is not good at all. We still have to work in these conditions. But this is what we signed for and I have no complaints about that. Please give a like if you have enjoyed this vlog and consider subscribing to the channel for more of the Simon life. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.